My name is uh, Karen Bailey. I'm a research scientist with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada in Saskatoon. Um, I've developed a technology that uh, it's where we use a fungus to control broadleaf weeds in turf grass. And uh, we found this fungus actually from Saskatchewan, although we found other isolates from across Canada. And uh, it's taken us a few years, but what we found is that uh, it can control weeds such as dandelion, Canada thistle, plantain, chickweed, as well as uh, agricultural weeds such as uh, wild mustard too. Um, We've uh, gone through a development process where we've learned how to grow it in uh, fermentation and we've developed a formulation so that it's broadcast to the soil surface. So uh, we've just gone through the registration in Canada and uh, we were successful so we're very happy about that and uh, we're now in the process of trying to develop it into a commercial product that will hopefully be on the store shelves by about 2014. This is called Foma macrostoma as its scientific name. Um, this fungus is found everywhere really around the world. It's a, it's a common organism and uh, what we what, when we did find it, it uh, causes um, the plants that are susceptible to turn white and uh, plants that aren't susceptible stay green. And so what we found is that uh, plants that aren't susceptible happen to be grasses and cereals as well as some crops like flax. Um, but uh, broadleaf weeds in general are susceptible, so um, we can differentiate and use it as a broadleaf weed control in basically turf or cereals. Um, we use this as a broadcast to the soil because the fungus has to go in through the root system. Um, it does produce a phytotoxin when it's in the plants and that's what causes the plants to turn white and eventually die because there's no photosynthetic activity going on. In terms on. of its environmental fate in the soil, when we broadcast this on the soil, the fungus basically stays where you put it. It really doesn't grow out. Um, we've done a lot of studies where we've looked at to see how far down in the soil profile it moves and it only goes down to about eight centimeters deep. We've seen look to see how far out from an edge where we place it it goes and it only goes at, well it actually goes less than 30 centimeters from where we actually place it. So so it's very safe. It doesn't move from where you're going to put it. So if you're putting it on your lawn and broadcasting it like a fertilizer you would use an edge guard so it doesn't go in your flower bed because some of your flowers could be susceptible but if you've got that edge guard you don't have to worry otherwise. We've also done studies about persistence in the soil and uh, what we found is that the organism st stays in the soil and is fairly active until about four months. So you get about four months of control out of it and then it starts to decline and a year later we can't find any presence of the fungus in the soil. It's below our levels of detection and we find that if we put susceptible crops in that soil a year later they grow just fine so there's no harmful effects. We've got the registration for um, application in turf grass right now, so that's a non-food use, okay? But um, we're now looking to start the research into seeing how we could use this in ag agriculture and whether we could adapt it for that. And that will then require another registration for feed and food use. But we know that um, it can control the weeds in agriculture, and we're now starting to learn some of the other factors because we're putting it out much earlier in the year when it's colder and so we want to see how it survives and whether it's able to remain uh, as efficacious. The registration that we have is uh, currently in Canada. We did do a, a joint application with the EPA, which is the organization that the, the states that would register it. Um, we're still under review with them, but we're expecting that fairly soon.